Around Christmas time in 2009, a looming threat emerged within Google's network, marking a significant incident. Google, renowned as the internet's leading website, faced an unprecedented challenge despite its robust security measures. With a team of skilled professionals, Google had been safeguarding its operations since the 90s. However, this attack proved to be exceptionally sophisticated, eluding the vigilant eyes of security experts. Security is paramount at Google, with extensive measures in place. The attack, known as Operation Aurora, managed to breach these defenses. Hackers infiltrated Google's servers, compromising multiple systems in an attempt to access unauthorized data. Despite Google's swift detection and containment of the attack, the aftermath revealed a more intricate and insidious cyber threat. The attack, disclosed by Google on January 12, 2010, left cybersecurity experts astonished. The malware utilized was undetectable by antivirus software, prompting a comprehensive analysis by companies like McAfee. Subsequently, other major entities, including Adobe, acknowledged falling victim to similar attacks during the winter holidays. Operation Aurora targeted not only Google, but also over 20 other companies, ranging from Yahoo and Rackspace to Microsoft and Dow Chemicals. Reports even suggested that up to 200 companies may have been affected. The scale and sophistication of the attack prompted joint investigations by victim companies, security firms, and law enforcement. The attackers executed a meticulously planned strategy. They selected specific targets, often employees with network access, and conducted extensive research on their email communication patterns. The phishing emails sent to the targets were highly convincing, mimicking regular correspondence and luring victims to click on a seemingly innocuous link. What set Operation Aurora apart was its use of zero-day exploits, vulnerabilities unknown to Microsoft at the time. This allowed the malware to exploit fully patched systems, making traditional defenses ineffective. Upon clicking the malicious link, victims unknowingly downloaded a Trojan designed with strong encryption and stealth capabilities. The attacker's focus extended beyond mere infiltration. They aimed to access Gmail accounts, particularly those of Chinese human rights activists, subject to court orders. Simultaneously, the attackers sought Google's source code stored in Perforce. The flaws in Perforce's security became apparent, allowing the attackers easy access to the source code, potentially including that of the Chrome browser. This sophisticated attack marked a turning point for commercial companies, showcasing the vulnerability of even the most advanced security systems. Google's thorough investigation revealed the attacker's interest in human rights activists' emails and raised suspicions of potential government involvement. As the US government delved into the matter, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton addressed the media, emphasizing the need for cybersecurity vigilance. With respect to the recent announcement by Google, um, we um, are obviously very concerned uh, about Google's announcement regarding a campaign that the company believes originated in China to collect the passwords of Google email account holders. Uh, Google informed uh, the State Department of this situation yesterday in advance of its public announcement. Uh, these allegations are very serious. Uh, we take them seriously. We're looking into them. The coordinated efforts of companies, cybersecurity experts, and law enforcement underscored the gravity of Operation Aurora, prompting a re-evaluation of cybersecurity measures across industries. A spokesperson for the Chinese Foreign Ministry had a reply. Blaming China is unacceptable. The Chinese government places great importance on the computer and internet security and controls the internet according to law and demands that internet users respect relevant laws and regulations when using the internet. As Google delved deeper into the investigation, the evidence pointing to China's involvement became increasingly compelling. The sheer sophistication of the attack, striking multiple companies simultaneously, suggested a highly advanced group with substantial resources and privileged access to China's internet infrastructure. This was no ordinary cyber espionage effort. It involved dozens of skilled individuals operating at an advanced level. To understand the context, we need to rewind to 2005. Google embarked on the creation of Google.n, a version tailored for the Chinese audience. Despite the challenges, Google secured a license to operate in China, adhering to the government's censorship requirements. However, the situation escalated after the 2008 Olympics, with the Chinese government expanding censorship demands, causing discontent among Google's US executives. 
The censorship requests intensified post-Olympics, encompassing broad restrictions on sexual content and criticism of the Chinese government. The growing dissatisfaction among Google executives reached a tipping point when the attacks occurred in late 2009. A substantial internal debate unfolded, with Sergey Brin expressing deep concern over the attempt to breach Chinese civil rights activists' accounts and the extent of government censorship. Sergey's perspective, rooted in Google's motto of don't be evil, clashed with executive chairman Eric Schmidt's pragmatism, emphasizing compliance with local laws. The internal debate persisted for nearly four months until Larry Page sided with Sergey. The decision was monumental. Google opted to shut down Google.n, redirecting traffic to Google.com.hk in Hong Kong, which operated under a different legal jurisdiction. The impact was seismic. Google withdrew from the world's most populous country, a move that significantly affected traffic and revenue. More importantly, it marked Google's stance against Chinese censorship laws. The announcement, made at 6 a.m. Beijing time, created a shockwave among Google employees in China, prompting a flood of questions and concerns. Management's response, distributing tickets to see the movie Avatar, left many feeling abandoned. The aftermath was swift. China blocked access to all Google sites including Google.zen and Google.com.hk.baidu. The major Chinese search engine became the go-to platform, promoting a distorted narrative about events like the Tiananmen Square protests. Operation Aurora became a turning point, compelling companies, including Google, to bolster their defenses against sophisticated attacks targeting commercial networks. Security researchers from Symantec, Dell SecureWorks and CrowdStrike delved into Operation Aurora, seeking to unravel the group behind the attacks. Symantec identified a recurring code variable named Elderwood, leading to the designation of the hacking group as Elderwood. CrowdStrike referred to them as Sneaky Panda, while Dell labeled them the Beijing Group. Staying true to the name Elderwood, security researchers meticulously documented Operation Aurora and compiled an extensive dossier on this elusive hacking group. Even in the years following the initial attack, researchers diligently explored other major cyber incidents, searching for connections to the Elderwood hacking group. Several links emerged, ranging from the use of the same Trojan to shared command and control servers, or similar code comments. In the three years post-Operation Aurora, Elderwood was suspected in seven distinct attack campaigns, each resulting in numerous hacked companies. Subsequent to Operation Aurora, Elderwood unleashed an attack featuring a zero-day exploit utilizing Adobe Flash. Notably, this raised eyebrows, considering their prior intrusion into Adobe during Operation Aurora. Speculation ensued that Elderwood might have obtained Flash's source code from Adobe, simplifying the process of developing new exploits. Astonishingly, they wielded five different zero-day exploits for Adobe Flash, successfully breaching numerous companies. The group's capabilities seemed boundless, progressively growing in power over time. Elderwood's distinctiveness extended to an uncanny ability to predict when their zero-day exploits were about to be discovered or fixed. Sensing an imminent patch, they strategically deployed their zero-day exploits, attempting to infiltrate as many places as possible simultaneously. The group might have access to internal bug tracking tools within major companies like Google, Microsoft or Adobe, possibly with insider assistance. Post-Operation Aurora, Elderwood shifted tactics, abandoning phishing emails for watering hole attacks. By compromising popular websites and injecting malware, they waited for users to visit, gaining full access to infected computers. Simultaneously, they altered their primary targets. While Microsoft, Google and Adobe remained on their radar for finding new exploits, their focus shifted primarily to gaining access to defense companies. Notable entities like Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, Boeing and General Dynamics were in their crosshairs, indicating an interest in classified military information. Rather than attacking these defense companies directly, Elderwood demonstrated a preference for infiltrating suppliers, third-party companies, and even suppliers of suppliers. By infecting the supply chain, they could compromise the defense companies indirectly, exploiting the comparatively weaker security of these entities. Elderwood displayed a thorough understanding, studying components used in specific weapons or tanks, and identifying suppliers and relevant websites. Despite the lack of specific details on the companies targeted by Elderwood, Symantec's insights revealed their modus operandi and the types of companies in their sites. 
human rights organizations emerged as their second largest target, with suspicions of Elderwood's involvement in placing zero-day flash exploits on sites like Amnesty International Hong Kong, the International Institute for Counterterrorism, and the Cambodian Institute of Foreign Affairs. Estimates suggest that Elderwood may consist of hundreds or even thousands of individuals, organized into teams handling different aspects of their operations. From developers crafting exploits to intelligence gatherers, attack planners, and analysts, Elderwood's well-funded and highly advanced nature suggests years, if not decades, of collaboration before being uncovered. Published research papers outlining the Elderwood Group's tactics, techniques, and procedures prompted a shift in their strategies to evade detection. Some researchers even posit that Elderwood may have splintered into smaller, specialized groups for specific attacks, such as espionage or targeting certain sectors. China's cyber threat landscape remains one of the most advanced and persistent, exemplified by the activities of the Elderwood Group. In 2015, the US President Barack Obama and Chinese President Xi Jinping engaged in cyber attack diplomacy, resulting in an agreement likely influenced by the Operation Aurora attacks. That we consider an act of aggression that has to stop. And uh, you know, we are preparing a number of measures that will indicate to the Chinese that this is not just a matter of us being mildly upset. Subsequently, in 2017, President Donald Trump and President Xi Jinping renewed a truce, pledging to refrain from attacking commercial sectors for intellectual property theft. However, skepticism persists about the enforceability of such agreements, given the continued cyber espionage activities of both nations. This truce appears weak and unenforceable, especially considering the evolving capabilities of groups like Elderwood. As demonstrated, Elderwood is adept at targeting commercial sectors, particularly companies supplying defense contractors. Taking a defense company as a client significantly raises the threat landscape for their suppliers. The contemporary cyber landscape mirrors an arms race, with foreign countries persistently attempting to hack into government and defense entities to amass critical information. Simultaneously, governments engage in reciprocal hacking, marking a new normal in cyber espionage where spyware confronts spyware, and cyber patriots navigate the hidden battlefront.